Hi everyone, my name is Leila Shukrun. I'm Professor of International Law and Director of the University of Portsmouth's Democratic Citizenship theme. We're very happy today to present our new book with Professor James Nedupara, International Economic Law, published by Cambridge University Press. My name is James Nedumpara. I'm heading the Center for Trade and Investment Law at the Indian Institute of Foreign Trade in New Delhi. I also teach uh, international trade law at Jinder Global Law School, which is just outside Delhi in India. So what are you going to find in this book? You're going to find a number of really interesting features, different features. The book reconciles all fields of international economic law. It creates bridges between discipline in a conceptual as well as practical manner. It's a modern book in that it's a rupture with what existed as well as always an evolving project. It provides a technically solid yet critically rich body of knowledge that spans disciplines from trade law to investment, finance, development and aid. It also positions international economic law as a truly global practice. The, compre the comprehensive coverage includes various treaty texts, landmark cases and new materials, and it's supplemented by case studies, real life example, exercises and illustration. This book, which is co-written uh, by Lila and myself, is actually an outcome or a, or a product uh, over several years of hard work. It includes new and old cases. It includes most of the landmark decisions, not in the select areas of international trade or investment law, but even in the field of public international law. If you look at uh, the introductory chapter of the book, you will get a very good uh, snapshot into the uh, key principles of public international law as well. We have also provided the background and the context of some of, some of the landmark decisions. Then we have provided the, the extracts. Then we provided the, the analysis of the cases and sometimes even critiques. At the end, we have provided a nice summary. We have provided some problem questions and we have also provided mock exercises. So in a way, uh, a chapter of this book is standalone and it provides everything that a student actually requires uh, in the field of international economic law. While discussing the fate of international economic law during a conference in New Delhi a few years ago, James and I both came to the same conclusion. It was time to see international economic law presented in a coherent and integrated manner. It was time to defragment international law and look at it beyond its technicalities. It was a sort of pressing urgencies we felt. Uh, as Lila mentioned, international economic law is growing exponentially. Uh, both of us studied this discipline when it was possible for us to cover at least uh, some of the most important topics with a few well-known textbooks and other reference materials. We had a relatively simple task of identifying the materials and the reference book in this field. From my own experience, uh, when I started teaching international trade law, I had to carry with me multiple textbooks. I had to carry uh, the WTO Treaty or the Marrakesh Agreement. Then I had to carry multiple printouts of the WTO cases. In addition to that, I had to carry one or two standard textbooks in the field of international trade. I wish I had a single book which can help me navigate the theory, the treaty text, and the case discussions. In the late 1990s, the WTO cases were fairly short, uh, at least in, in the field of international uh, trade law. At present, we have uh, nearly 600 cases, of which a good proportion has gone to a panel or appellate body uh, decision. So this book is actually written with a view to lightening the burden 
of the students and practitioners in the field of international economic law. Students, academics and practitioners alike are often lost in the meandering density of materials and technical norms deprived of general significance and full of hyper-specialism. So how could we simplify this body of law without altering its content? How could we make this fascinating field of law easily approachable for students as well as the teaching and practicing communities? That was our vision, that was our objective. And as you understood, the book is firmly grounded in general international law and it's critical and interdisciplinary. It shows the interactions between discipline as a reflection of the complexity of international relation and economic globalization. It revolves around the state as the main subject of international law, while also integrating other actors and participants. In addition, our, our vision is generally international in that it shows why and how international economic law should not be a thing of the West or the dominating powers anymore. It is very much integrative, it integrates all sorts of countries. It also integrates the practice and conceptual approaches of the global South and intends to participate in a renewed vision of international law. We were very much attached to this very aspect. This textbook is very much informed by our own research and scholarship. In the same vein, we have made sure that the case studies and other legal developments speak to practitioners of international law and international economic law precisely. For years, we have advised governments, industries, civil society. So our technical approach, as well as the critical distance that we often take to address particular issues, is based on pragmatism and the lessons we've learned from our experiences. Working together, we drew insight from each other and our combined strengths and perspective have contributed to the rich array of materials presented in this book. So this textbook can be read at different levels of specialism. It's also a very agile instrument for teaching and learning international economic law. We should also mention that this book is very user-friendly for even a practitioner. So if a lawyer is writing a legal opinion, or writing a, a brief uh, in relation to a W2 case or an investment case, you will find the appropriate legal standard. Uh, just to give an example, uh, the most favored nation concept is present in multiple places in the GATT. Uh, the same is actually true with the national treatment obligation. It is also present in some of the W2 agreements, such as the TPT agreement and the SPS agreement. The same thing can be uh, spoken about the necessity test, which is there in Article 20 of the GATT, and also in the, uh, the SPS and the TBT agreement. What we have done is to actually, you know, definitely be the various concepts, and we have attempted to build on the kind of analysis we have provided in the previous chapters. Each chapter, including the introduction, which provides the reader with a conceptual vision of the field, can be used separately. The chapters are precise enough to cover a given aspect of international economic law. It is as such a great tool for students who do not need to buy additional resources, including treaty texts for specialized courses. Yet the textbook forms a very coherent piece of work which opens perspective and invites the reader to go further as illustrated by our mini chapter, a really interesting feature of the book, each addressing important contemporary and interdisciplinary issues of international economic law, such as the law and human rights, such as taxation, the blue economy, environment. A always involving instrument, this textbook is also designed to stand the tests of time in a fast-changing legal environment. It addresses uh, international economic law in long-term perspective, giving the reader the keys to a deep understanding of contemporary realities informed by past experiences. This book is fairly comprehensive and very much uh, updated. It includes topics like uh, climate change, which is extremely uh, sensitive at this moment, electronic commerce, 
and then the discussions on fishery subsidies at the WTO. It also includes a, ta a, a mini chapter on, uh, on taxation in the digital economy, which includes the digital service taxes as well. So in many ways, uh, the book provides a very good historical understanding of the evolution of these topics and their current status uh, either at the WTO or in various free trade agreements and other economic treaties. So I hope that this book actually provides everything a student or a practitioner requires. Uh, both Laila and myself, we are located in different jurisdictions, but we had the benefit of studying and working in multiple locations as well. So we hope that our experience of handling different issues in different settings contributes to the richness of the book. I expect that you would find this book useful and we are delighted to have your feedback, your comments and your questions. Thank you very much. We hope to contribute to a new international law scholarship, generally international, dynamic, agile and open to all other disciplines and ideas. We also hope that you will like this book very much and get back to us with comments, suggestions for improvement, of course.